Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osterberg501, and today I want to go over and fully explain what the tactic system is in Myth of Empires, because I think there's a lot of confusion about the system, what it does, and how important it is. So once you go to the tactic section, you're going to see three different tabs, Art of Strategy, Art of Provocation, and Art of Improvement. So the first off and most general thing about the system is pretty much none of this affects your actual character. It doesn't affect your stats. It doesn't affect or give you any new passives. All of these three sections are all for your NPCs. Now there are a few of the Art of Strategy talents that will affect your play and give you boost if you have an AI with you in combat. But aside from those few, these are all just for AI because in the late, late end game of Myth of Empires, AI are going to be incredibly important for crafting, for taming, for general combat, for pretty much everything you can do in the game. Now, before we get more in depth into these, how you actually get these tactics is you're going to kill elite or dragon elite AI AI enemies out in the world, and those have a chance to drop either a normal chest key, a rare chest key, or a treasure map. And you just do any of those things. So you use the keys on treasure chests, use the keys on rare chests, or go do the treasure maps. And doing any of those things is going to reward you with different scrolls. Now, one scroll, which is like what I have in my inventory, are the gold ones. Now, the gold scrolls are all going to be art of strategy, art of provocation are going to be these kind of tape looking square items you get and I think those are only from instance treasure map loot and then art of improvement are going to be a black scroll. Now the difference between the three is art of improvement are mainly giving your AI different passive buffs or teaching them total new things so say a talent here that when they kill something they gain health over time or you can teach them to craft higher quality items. Art of provocation is going to be for buffing up the enrage of AI. So if you go to AI, most AI will come with rages. Not all of them like you see there, but most AI will come with different rages. They're just random to any AI. This one has a 30% chance to trigger a berserk when your leg is hit, which will increase your damage by 15% and movement speed by 10% for that AI. Now, whatever rage this AI has, if you have that art of provocation leveled up, it will actually buff that specific specific rage. So they have to have the rage. And then if you have the art of provocation leveled up, so mine's level zero here. If I get it to level one, it will give me a new upgraded version of that rage talent, which then any AI I have will have the better version of that rage talent. So this one would be a 60% chance of trigger instead of 30, and it would give me 30% damage and 20% move speed instead of 15 and 10. So it just doubles the effect. And you need six of a specific one of these arts to actually get it to level one. So I have five out of 30 here. Any one of these tapes I get are going to give me five. So I need six, then it will upgrade to level one. Then art of improvement are the black scrolls. And these are reducing the debuffs that AI come with. So AI, all of a chance to just come with different weaknesses. So say here increases toxicity induced by medicine or food by 30%, decreases efficiency of gaining skill proficiency efficiency by 60%, which is the worst one in the game. So if you go to Art of Improvement, you can actually find the corresponding one. So we have Dual Wit right here. And if you upgrade this to level one or whatever level pass at, it will reduce that debuff on any AI you have that has it. So you're essentially just helping with the weaknesses they come with and reducing those. Now, I don't have any of these maxed out, so I'm not sure if you can fully remove those weaknesses or if you can just max massively reduce how strong those weaknesses are. Now, the most important part of this tactic system are the art of strategies, because these are very important in the end game, and it's going to make AI incredibly important and incredibly strong in pretty much every facet of the game in the late, late end game. So all of these either will give your AI passive buffs, new abilities, or crafting like we went over, but your AI has to have that that corresponding perk so it can be activated. So say we go to my AI right here and I have a few perks that are locked off because my AI doesn't have the correct talents or
or levels for it. Then I have some that are grayed out but not unlocked, which means that my AI has the correct level and proficiency, but I don't have the tactic unlocked. Then we have one here that's lit up, which means my AI has the level and proficiency required for it, and I also have the tactic for it. So be grateful right here. When using the loyalty increasing item from the warrior, the loyalty gain is increased by 8%. So if we go to that tactic, you'll see I have a level one right here because one scroll got me level one. Now I'll need to get two different scrolls that all give five points to get level two. So as you see here, we're getting 8%. The next level is going to double it, which will give me 16%. Now this AI will keep getting the additional benefits as I get the new tactics and level them up more. So it just needs that one warrior skill and then I have to keep getting more tactics to level up that skill for any of my warriors. And something that's going to be super super important because of how long stuff takes to craft in this game is getting an AI that's really good at crafting. So as you see here I have a forging master AI. So forging master is what allows an AI to craft higher quality weapons which are green weapons, blue weapons, purple weapons, etc. And that's going to be really important because in the end game, and once you have these good AI and have the tactics, you don't want a player sitting on a bench crafting one weapon for eight minutes at a time. You're pretty much not able to play the game, and early in mid game right now, you're pretty much required to have players do that and to have a player as an armor smith and sit on a bench in AFK and craft the armor, have a player sit on a bench in AFK craft the weapons. So something like getting this forging master skill up, rank one will let me do level 10 weapon molds which are greens. The next one after I get forging master level 2 it'll be able to craft a higher level of weapon molds which will be able to craft blue weapon molds. So AI are going to become more and more important as you get into the end game, as you keep leveling up, and as you keep unlocking more and more tactics. So that's the main overview I wanted to go over for the tactic system. I think a lot of people were confused how the system worked, including me and my guild. Even up until a few days ago, we didn't understand how all of these tactics worked and exactly what they were for. So just a quick TLDR, you go kill elite enemies, you you can get keys and treasure maps. You do those keys and treasure maps, you'll get different scrolls, which you will then use to unlock a different buffs for your AI, new abilities for your AI, reduce weaknesses of your AI, and also buff up the rage effects of your AI. So that's pretty much all I want to go over. So subscribe if you want to see more Myth of Empires or other videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about Myth of Empires as a whole. And thanks for watching.